life in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania is seasonal. On the surface, it looks gloomy and gray. But upon closer inspection, you get a little bit of everything. With the good comes the bad. But it's that perspective that's fascinating. When one season rolls into the next, that moment of time provides different emotions for different faculties. That change, however, is necessary. It provides life. It offers a new outlook. It transforms a landscape into something else entirely. Back on home ice again here tonight after a really thrilling win over the Montreal Canadiens in their last game. They come into town with a record right now of 10-5 and 0. The measuring stick of a hockey team can also be an enigma. When it comes to records, they can be spun any number of ways. And despite the Penguins' decent start to the year, they weren't playing up to their potential. Columbus play hard in this zone. It's a tough to guess. I hope next time we win. It took us a while to break through, but unfortunately it was just too little too late. The game is going to end. The Jackets will win it 2-1. to one. It's a tough league. There's a lot of parity. You're not going to win every night, but I think it's how you lose. And we just didn't lose the right way. We didn't go down swinging. That'll do it. Well, the Penguins, back-to-back -back losses. They'll have to regroup and get ready for Minnesota. We're not happy, but... It's a uh, beginning season, it's a good time to stop and uh, look forward. The forecast was still promising for this team, but halfway through an unseasonably warm November, the Penguins were starting to feel the heat as well. For us, we have so much talent, but with that talent we need to work. When we have everyone on the team working hard for 60 minutes, then that's where the talent really shines through. That's when we play the right way. On that night, no one shined brighter than Evgeny Malkin. It's a hockey night in Pittsburgh. Tonight from the Gasol Energy Center in downtown Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the National Hockey League presents the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Colorado Avalanche. When the game against the Wild only met a left and was helped off the ice, the early diagnosis is he'll be out three to four weeks. The Pens are going to have to readjust. Turn up! Skate! 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 Skate, Horny! Make sure you guys are an option when I get that, eh? On top of the Penguins, lead it right in by Braun. It jumped off Barra. Oh, look out, Loretta. Yeah, I think it went off the buttocks of David Braun. And you talk about bounces. I'll take one of those. I'll take one of those, please. I know see it's a little bit tough time right now, but I see how he works in practice. He's the oldest best player. Come on, boys, keep going, keep going. The Penguins have another goal, and they're up 3-1. to one. And Farah literally doesn't know whether to cry or wind his watch. Nice mitt. The Penguins all of a sudden here with two goals, 39 seconds apart. How quick did they score three? Two minutes and eight seconds. Go, Horny, go! He's fun to watch every night. And I know in media have been on him because he hasn't scored as much, but I don't think it's for lack of effort. It's 82 games. They're going to start coming for him. I got it. I got a touch of puck. I'm gonna roast this guy who's standing still, so if I get it, then I can just cut in. When I'm calling, just trust me that I want it. Hey! Back 
Hands up with the Penguins in front of the net. And guess who's got it? Sidney Crosby. Well, I'll be Cal Kick. And the Penguins hold on and win. That's your final score here tonight. The Penguins four and the Avalanche three. The holidays were fast approaching and the Penguins were getting in the spirit. While half the team practiced on their home ice, the other half practiced home alone. We're the wet bandits. Like I'm so, that was me super geared up. Right. <laughs> kind of has squinty eyes, eh? Yeah. Keep the change, you filthy animal. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Sneaking up the stairs. Sneaking up the stairs. Starting to look like a little guy, too. <laughs> The Penguins were quickly able to get back into character. Just in time to welcome the Sharks and former teammate Paul Martin back to Pittsburgh. It's very tough because he's a good skater, you know, he's a good position guy, he's very smart. He's just so reliable. When you need a goal, you can add a little extra offense. Flurry fought off and it goes into the net. May have hit a penguin. The horn sounds and that's it. San Jose keeps the motor going. For a veteran journeyman like Matt Cullen, the motor has stopped in numerous cities across the NHL. Adapting to your surroundings is crucial, so he and his family visited the aviary in Pittsburgh to learn about penguins. Come on in, guys. Grab a seat here. All right. So this is my buddy Elvis. Elvis is an African penguin. These guys are actually used to weather kind of like we have here in Pittsburgh. There's no feathers around their feet. Imagine walking around in ice and snow in bare feet all the time. Not gonna be a whole lot of fun. Elvis here has his name for two reasons. Number one, he was hatched at the Memphis Zoo in Tennessee. So of course, Elvis. Also for Mike Lang's famous radio call, Elvis has just left the building whenever the Penguins win. That's, That's pretty better. good, eh? That's a little bit better one. <laughs> Come here, you. We're gonna put Elvis back for now, and then we're gonna go see another bird up close. Yeah. Oh, look at it. Here, Joey, you ready? Put your hands up. He's hungry, eh? Look at him. Joey, isn't that cool? Flamingos are freaky. Freaky. Oh, look at these guys. Look at the there cheek of the... Oh, that's one like they have the white mustache that sticks up the side. You see that? Oh my gosh, look at the mouse! It fits right in with those birds. We have an animal in here that's not a bird. Two-toed sloth. Look at that thing. Oh! His name is Wookie. He is 15 years old. What does he eat? Fruits and vegetables. So lettuce, some of his favorites are green beans. Same as these guys. Green beans, eh? Yeah. Love them. <laughs> Much like the two-toed sloth, you don't often hear about the backup goalie. But Penguins netminder Jeff Zatkoff makes sure his teammates can hear him. And I know my role on the team. I most likely play 20 games a year as a backup. Let's go! That's what you call hand-eye. No, you shot it like 30 feet over the net, remember? Yeah. There we go, there it is. These guys are buzzing. I'm there to try and give the guys a little extra push and just a little extra motivation. Let's go north, let's go north here. Great save there by Mark andre Fleury, just getting the bicep on that Pi Arby shot. Look out, here's the steal, Crosby, he scores! Yeah! He has scored against every team in the league now. To see him get one that early in the game, gets his legs going, gets the energy going. He's not gonna miss too many times from there. There's a huge chunk out of the ice, like. Yeah. That's a, that's a 60 degree right there. And things aren't always gonna go well, but try to have that positive reinforcement and give guys encouragement. Nice, nice, right up. Good try. Now let's hang. 
Slaps it over to Lovejoy, a shot. And that's blocked when it comes to Perron. The Lovejoy, the shot, he scores! Love it! Great shot, ref. Can't teach that. Yeah. Dramatically since the start of the season. They're 22nd right now, and they get a shot away, and a rebound comes off, and Stanley puts it in. Keep going, boys. Keep going. Come on, G. Let's go here, baby. Love Joy. Give it back to Kessel, and Kessel trying to come up. He's got a break with Malkin. Gives it to him. Malkin in on goal, a backhander. Hey! Jones and score! Evgeny Malkin finishes it, and Elvis has just left the building. Despite the win against St. Louis, the Penguins reached the end of November still trying to find their game. To get to the top in hockey, you have to take advantage of every opportunity you get. And as December hit, the opportunity in front of the Penguins was to capitalize on their longest road trip of the season. When we not play good, it's always tough, you know. We start faster at each other, you know, it's a little bit mad, you know, it's smashed stick on glass boards, you know, it's all wrong things, you know. When we win, it's a little bit better, but now it's a good time to play better every game. No better place to start playing better than a place the Penguins haven't won in over 18 years. Go ahead. I say it's uh, every game is better and we start score, you know, we score power play, we score five goals, it's uh, more confidence from the team. I thought we played well for, you know, 60 minutes of that game. That's a tough building to come in, no matter how well you're playing, they're just a team that always seems to get the puck at the net. Of course, after the game, we're happy, you know, we understand we play good. Now we're more confident, guys feel better. Mixing business and pleasure is usually difficult. But with three days between games, the guys who make a living on the ice played in the sand. It's important, especially at the beginning of the year with some new bodies, new faces, to really just get to know everyone and to bond. Oh, of course it's good because we're joking around, you know, smiling. The rookie guys, you know, see what we do. They uh, start a little bit uh, feel better, you know, it's, uh, it's always work. Oh, oh, nice oh, oh, <laughs> Read it like a book. To be able to go out on the beach, play beach volleyball, and just have a few days where you don't really have to worry about the pressure, the stresses of a game. Just kind of let your guard down and relax and hang with your teammates and kind of get to know them better. That's always fun and it takes the pressure off and just kind of loosens you up for when the next game comes. Having a good time in Southern California has a little different meaning for Bo Bennett. So does sitting in traffic. It's nostalgic for the kid from L.A. Oh boy, this is L.A. for you. This is where I lived for 17 years. It's always nice to come home in the summers, but coming home for this long during the year, it's a little different and it's been pretty special. I like this one a lot. This is at Lake Louise and Bam. This is my dad and then my sister and two brothers. And then this one's pretty cool too. When I got drafted, because I was in LA, is at Staples Center. Good times. This is Luana Bennett. Hi. Uh, best woman in the world, best oh. mom in the world. And uh, she always made sure we had food on the table. It was usually set as soon as you got home from yeah. school because we hit the road right yeah. everywhere. I've had four Christmases in a row where I haven't played the last game before Christmas break and being healthy right now it makes me feel a lot better and um, being around my family uh, healthy is, is also a good thing. A lot of hours on that computer right there actually doing late night homework growing up. And then this is kind of where it all started is me and my older brother. That was our first team ever at Tidal Waves. 99. Wow. That uh, right up there was compliments of one of the boys. Yeah. A puck up there. This is actually the coolest part of the house. Sticks out here. This is where I spent a lot of my time. If I'd be out here before school in the morning and I'd be just shooting pucks. I would love to know how many pucks I've lost out here. Probably hundreds. Great place to grow up though. It's kind of like kids paradise, you know. It's, you don't really have to leave home to have fun. Don't go in here. I'm showing it anyways. Yeah. I'm showing it anyways. She's kept all my favorite jerseys throughout the years. And this first one actually is the first ice hockey team I ever played on. This El Segundo Regents team. 
Here's a double zero, Bennett, tough number. And then the, the original hockey jersey where it all started and the B Bennett because I played with my older brother on the team and uh, I'm pretty surprised this is still in this good of condition. It's pretty special that uh, we still have these. I can literally look at a jersey and remember like uh, the game we lost in or the game we won in. Uh, the people. Yeah, the people. So every jersey has a story and fortunate to uh, is that my mom? Yeah, that's why my mom. Yeah, she loves it and I love Someday it. You'll take them with you, but yeah, exactly. What's the high of your day? What was the low of your day? Always Sometimes like funny. Low school, high <laughs> yeah. hockey. Was yeah. Low, was yeah. <laughs> low, I had to go to school. High, we had practice. We're so excited for him anyway because it's been his passion. We just tried to do everything that we could do to support all of the kids and what they really wanted to be a part of. It's cool, you know what I mean? I'm really proud of him. Uh, he's worked really hard. But the cool thing is nothing has really changed. He still comes home, we play in the backyard together. But it's so exciting. It's hard to believe, actually. Yeah. I get a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> really proud of you. Just keep it going. You've worked hard. And the Kings answer themselves. 4 1 Los Angeles. Let's get a shot, boys. Get shots on that. Cousins up and that could have been a penalty. Penguins. But he shoots and scores. And that boy, Ole. Wide, wide. Come on, boys. Come on. We need more here. Crosby steered it in. Sidney Crosby scores on the redirect. And it is 4 to 3. Guys, boys! Toronto! And a big save made by Quick. Oh, yeah, where are boys? Where? Let's go! Hey, take me side! Lucic has an empty net goal. The goal of a successful road trip wasn't hopeless, but it wasn't getting any easier. The Penguins traveled 30 miles southeast on the Santa Ana Freeway to face the Ducks 24 hours later. I don't think their record's really indicative of how good of a team they are. They had some trouble scoring at the start, which I think maybe gives their record a little worse than what it is, but definitely a tough swing to go into LA and then Anaheim back to back. The toughest swing was yet to come. Prior to their game in Colorado, the Penguins were hit with the news that Pascal Dupuis would no longer play hockey. We've been talking about it for a little while. It kind of made it more clear in my head that definitely something that was weighing on me and uh, on my wife, on my kids, and uh, on the team, and on my teammates too. It's going through all the testing, that uh, radiation, every time I get tested, I don't feel like I, I should have my body go through this again. I don't have to, to readapt to a different lifestyle, obviously. My main goal is to, to try to help this team as much as I can to, uh, to definitely win the Stanley Cup, but it's, uh, it's definitely not going to be on the ice. You know, I'm glad that uh, he went out on his terms, you know, he played till, until he wanted to, and you know, I feel fortunate I got to play with him for, for so many years and uh, won with him. Hopefully he'll be around. Um, I know he's going to have a hard time staying away from the rink, so I'm sure we'll see lots of him. You sort of put into words what he's meant to you as like a teammate and a friend throughout your career for a really long time now. <laughs> I don't know if I could get through it, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, gonna miss him a lot. Great guy. Thanks, sir. Yeah. It's a hockey night in Pittsburgh. Tonight from the Gasol Energy Center, the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Los Angeles Kings. Cole, he goes around him. Closing in is Pearson shooting. He scores. And Matt Cullen set it up and a score for the Penguins in front, Eric Fair. He ties this game from right in front as Cullen set him up beautifully. Malkin was down. He either took a cross check or a slash. He got up and wanted retribution. Penguins bang it in on the backhand. I think I'm getting Malkin. May have not got puck in. And guess what? We are going to go to a shootout. Mary and Gabbert moving towards the net. Rich shot, that's it. He beats Fleury on the glove hand side, and the gang have defeated the Pittsburgh Penguins. The Pittsburgh Penguins have made a coaching change. I want to thank Mike Johnson for his contribution to this team. Over the last couple of games, I saw a team that did have more fight in their game, but I look at this 
snapshot over the first 27 games and felt that we've underachieved. So I made this decision. I told Mike this morning we will uh, present uh, the new coach to you tomorrow. It's going to be Mike Sullivan. Uh, I've got to know him a little bit better and I believe that he's the guy that can come in and really take control and and really make some guys more accountable than when we're not performing at the level that we think we should be. Coach Sullivan, how are you? Great, thank you. Yourself? Welcome to Pittsburgh. Thank you. What I'm going to try to do with this group is we're going to try to define uh, a team game. We're going to try to define what it means to play the right way and down to the details, and we're going to work on that daily. We're going to come to the rink every day and try to get better. We can't get overwhelmed by the circumstance. I think we have to focus on the process. I've got a ton of respect for the players that are in that room and what they've accomplished. I think we have a chance to be a great team, but we have to show that through our actions. By no means do I want to take the stick out of the players' hands. I think we've got an offensively gifted group, and certainly we want to stay out of their way when those opportunities present themselves. I'm looking forward to the opportunity to, you know, to start playing games so, so I can see for myself uh, and get a first-hand view of, uh, of how this team's playing. Playing hockey requires changing direction. It's as fundamental as learning how to skate. But for a sport with roots as deep as one's memory, it's learning when to stop skating that's the hardest part. You know what, it was, uh, it was easier than I thought it would be, just because it feels right to, to end up here and basically came in here People thought I was just carrying me and a host of sticks and uh, ended up, I think, being a piece of the puzzle that uh, made, this, uh, made, made this team uh, successful along the way here. Thank you, guys. A successful team is made up of many people carrying many different things. It's a jigsaw puzzle with a ticking clock. And while it may glance over its shoulder to pay its respects, the game of hockey waits for no one. Finding the right pieces isn't easy, but if done correctly, it can change the entire landscape and give a hockey team exactly what they're aiming for. A chance to lift something collectively. Hey, you ever watch that cartoon, Doug Funny? Doug? Doesn't Steen's nose kind of look like Doug? Oh! Atta boy, 5-6. Jeez. Like, was that necessary? Oh, tough guy, Brewer, huh? Woohoo! Nice job. You all right? I didn't know you were hopping, sorry. 